What's up, everybody? It's the Roundtable Sports Podcast. My name is Taylor McLean, and we're off on our third game of the week. It was the exciting Los Angeles Chargers last minute win over the Arizona Cardinals. And these are two teams that desperately needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Of course, nobody's out of it at this point, but the team that won this game was certainly going to feel better about their chances than the loser. And it came down to the very end for the Chargers and Cardinals, so I'm excited to go through this one. Before we go into it, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Evergreen Power Solutions. My Texas listeners can call them at 214-444-9816. They're going to try and save you some money with your power bill right now and and also in the future. They're going to renegotiate for you and either get you a lower rate or keep your rate uh, at the same rate it is now. So you're not going to have to worry about power rates increasing or forgetting about renewing your contract. That'll all be taken care of for you. For someone like me, that's extremely important. So give them a call once again, 214-444-9816. Let them know the Roundtable Sports Podcast and Taylor McLean sent you. Now let's get on to the football. I definitely had to watch this game. I enjoy watching Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray play the quarterback position for very different reasons as they are the height of arm talent and leg talent in the NFL when it comes to Herbert and Kyler Murray, respectively. And I think they both have talent on the other side of their quarterback equation when it comes to Justin Herbert's ability to run and Kyler Murray's ability to throw. So two of my more favorite guys to watch, young guys that are still figuring it out and have potential to take their teams to a next level if they're able to find their footing and thrust themselves into the elite class of quarterback. On the Chargers side with Justin Herbert, this was an especially impressive game when you consider that The run game was pretty well abandoned by the Chargers. It was pretty apparent throughout the game that that wasn't going to be an option. And to their credit, they didn't try to force the issue. They put the ball in Justin's hands and allowed him to throw it 47 times. I'm not sure they would do that if they didn't know that Justin was feeling a little bit better, getting further and further away from his injury having had two different types of rib injuries myself, I can tell you that some of them take longer than others to heal. And there's no way that mine would have healed nearly as fast if I would have been playing quarterback, nevertheless, twisting my body to make these big time throws, as well as taking humongous hits from men that would kill a lot of us with a full hit to our head. So the fact that Justin's been able to do what he's done to this point and been able to play through the injury has been pretty miraculous in and of itself. And he seems to look better every week he gets away from it during the broadcast. The announcers said that he, Justin said he could still feel the rib injury move every so often. And that does kind of line up with what I have experienced as well in that it it took a long time for everything to get cinched back up. And like I said, I wasn't doing anything near as physical as what Justin was going through. Although I wasn't sitting in a cubicle either, it it still hurt every little movement that wasn't going the right way for what my rib felt like was the right way. So for to have Justin doing what he does, throwing the ball and then also taking as many quarterback hits as he has in this game and other games, it makes it especially impressive you know not only have they been without Rashawn Slater but they lost Pipkins on the right side during this game and then they also lost Lindsley their center as well to give them some of the worst injury luck when it comes to their offensive line amongst any of the teams and you know they haven't had Keenan Allen for long stretches they haven't had Mike Williams for long stretches so outside of having Austin Eckler back there looking healthy he hasn't had a whole lot of consistency in front of him or or to his outsides to this point this put Justin in a position to have 30 different types of pressures 
on his different dropbacks, four sacks, hit 11 times and hurried 15 times overall. I can tell you that I look through this on most of the games I go through, and that's really high for any team. And for Justin, who does absolutely have mobility to get out of the pocket and take advantage of the yards given to him like he did today, still that's a lot to put on his plate to ask him to drop back 47 times and give up as much pressure as you did with him once again coming back from a rib injury and still not having all his guys on the outside. Luckily, Keenan Allen was back for this game and definitely made a difference and has been making a difference since he came back last game for Justin. I don't think that it can be underlined and talked about enough that Justin relies on him and when he has him in his back pocket like he has the last couple of games, he's looked a lot more comfortable and he seemed to know where he wants to go with the ball a little bit more because he does have that security blanket type presence around him with Keenan Allen. And uh, we've been waiting for Justin to look whole with both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams for some time. Mike wasn't involved in this game, but there's a chance they've said that he'll be involved with the next one. Uh, That high ankle sprain is something he's still working through. And I'd love to see Justin, even with the diminished line, have the ability to go to both of them as well as have Gerald Everett working up the seams. Not only does it put Justin in a better place, it puts Joshua Palmer and Deontay Carter at their more natural three and four positions in the wide receiver game as well, which they are well more suited to and give Justin plus production rather than kind of like replacement level production as the one and two. So once again, putting everybody in the correct role within this offense has done a lot of good for the chargers. And then of course you've got Austin Eckler at working the, the receiving game, working, getting his targets and getting out into space at an elite level as well. He looked extremely healthy and I thought he did a great job of moving around and getting open for Justin and getting tough yards in the de facto running game. That was the short passing game for the Los Angeles chargers here. And it wasn't just limited to getting the tough touchdown or getting them down there. It was throughout the game that Eckler was involved. And when you have to cover the Chargers like you do down the field, because Justin Herbert can hurl the ball down the field with such ease, it gives Austin Eckler a lot of room to run. And it's important for them to take advantage of that and to work that part of the game to keep the defense honest. That goes for Justin's running ability as well he needs to make the the defense pay when they don't give him a second thought and he did so on in this game he had uh, some of the most open field i i've seen this year outside of jalen hurts's touchdown the other day versus the colts jalen's was more open just for the touchdown justin herbert just had nobody for 40 yards in front of him and took advantage and that is part of his game that i like that it doesn't matter what you need Justin to do what from the mobility standpoint, whether that's avoid people and work the ball downfield or to get the yards that are in front of him, Justin can do both of those things. So it's not only good for fantasy football, but it threatens the defense in a way that they have to respect his ability to run. And that allows him to do other things and that opens up other parts of the field. Uh, you just want it to be a situation where they're, they're danged if they do danged if they don't on covering him and he does check that box not in the same way that he checks the arm talent box because he has prodigious arm talent john elway type arm talent i can't stress that enough he throws the ball better and harder and longer than most people out there it's not that much harder longer or whatever than josh allen and patrick mahomes but those three stand alone When it comes to that, maybe you you put Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, Trevor Lawrence, Lamar Jackson right below that. But Justin stands on a tier of his own. So when one of my friends standard him and said that he needs to worry about being a quarterback in five years, like being a starting NFL quarterback in five years, I nearly wanted to jump out of my skin because the, the talent is so pure that everybody can recognize it. Like everybody and their mama can see Justin Herbert go out there and throw bombs and throw heat, throw 100-mile-per-hour heat. I talk about, you know, 
how fast people throw kind of in like baseball fastball terms. Cause that's something easy to relate. Justin Herbert is throwing a hundred. He's throwing a hundred in those terms. So when I talk about Andy Dalton throwing 84, Justin Herbert throwing 100, that's the range right there that you need to fall in to be successful in the NFL and Justin throwing at the highest level of that. So to hear someone say that he might not even be a quarterback felt blasphemous to me that he might not be a starter in five years just because the wins have gone the way they've gone for the Los Angeles Chargers. And that strikes me more as a Chargers thing than it does a Justin Herbert thing. And I heard excuses, excuses, winners win, all that bull crap. It's dumb people that automatically equate quarterback success and, and quarterback skill with just wins. That's dumb. And that's not using your brain. And that's not watching film and seeing the prodigious talent that I see with Justin Herbert. He still has some of the nuances of the game to figure out. And he can certainly take some of his quarterback Jedi skills to the next level, no doubt. And having Keenan, having Mike Williams, having your guys, not having your line fall apart in front of you and give up 30 pressures in a game that you end up winning will probably be a part of that. So that's something that I want to impress to, to my friend that, hey, Justin's here to stay. Justin got this win in the end, and, and the Chargers actually ended up making plays at the end of the game that made sense and that worked out. That's not the way that things have gone in the past. And I think that judging those things, as you might judge Justin Herbert because of those things, is not fair. And I don't think it's smart football overall overall you're trying to evaluate these type of things and evaluate these type, these type of quarterbacks because by that logic, Tua, Josh Allen, all these guys that lose up front and then end up putting it all together at a certain point, it's not just because they got better. It's also because the talent around them got better too. Oh, getting Stefan Diggs is good for your quarterback. Getting Tyreek Hill is good for your quarterback. Those are big things that affect everything. And, and for Justin, getting Keenan Allen back in that way has been nearly the same type of thing that puts him at ease, that allows him to do his thing, that gives him a, an extraordinary playmaker on the outside that he desperately needs to really take advantage of the, the prodigious arm talent that I've been talking about here. And as I said earlier, this was a bid to save the season and the like. Making the Chargers 6-5 and five is a big deal and puts them squarely in the mix as far as the playoff picture goes it's probably going to take a little bit of luck, but it doesn't feel like the schedule is something they can't handle necessarily. The Dolphins and the Titans, both at home, which they don't have the greatest home field advantage, but both at home definitely helps. Having the Colts and the Rams at home as well, which of course the Rams also play there too, but the Rams are kind of out of sync and may not get Matthew Stafford back. Same thing on the road at the very end to play the Broncos as well, who are a little out of sorts. So I don't count the Chargers out. And of course, not, let's not forget the Raiders. Next week, they were able to pull off a late win themselves and are, are fighting for their playoff life. So that should be fun on the road in Las Vegas. But at least at six and five, this puts them squarely in the mix there one game off of the pace, so to speak. And it's not like the Jets have inspired a lot of confidence despite putting in Mike White and having him look a little bit better in the offense. So anything's possible at this point. We'll see if the Chargers are able to pull it off like they did today. But make no mistake, this was definitely a step in that right direction. On the other side of it with the Arizona Cardinals, certainly not the step they were looking to take today. They had finally gotten Kyler Murray back after the hamstring injury. And I am here to report, not that you need me to do so, that Kyler Murray did look like he was over his hamstring injury. The speed was 100% there. He was cutting perfectly and moving like you would expect Kyler Murray to move. Even though he was pressured, he, was only, he only gave up the sack and was only hit one time like the great Aikido master that he is with the ball in his hands. He was able to get the key touchdown early on as well with very little time left in the second half to make this game really competitive. And when he needed to, he definitely turned on the Jets. They even had dialed up some designed runs 
there was definitely some elements of a kitchen sink type game for the Cardinals as well, where they were kind of seemed to be throwing things out there. Not that there was a lot of trick plays or anything, but the Kyler Murray design runs kind of seemed to speak to that. And outside of DJ Humphreys, and of course they lost Zach Ertz a little bit ago as well, the, the Cardinals seem to be a little bit more whole with getting Hollywood Brown out there in addition to Robbie Anderson, De- DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green and the like. They didn't have Greg Dulcich and they were missing Ertz, as I said, as well as Rondale Moore. But still, I, I say they were more whole because they finally had DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown together, as well as a healthy James Conner and Kyler Murray. So that that did give them a little bit more pop in their offense. And Kyler was targeting Hollywood Brown early and often. And of course, DeAndre was still able to get his and was able to convert for the touchdown on a nice play. And then, of course, he made a highlight reel grab even for him, stretching out in a way that I didn't think was possible for someone to catch the ball. So there was still some impressive plays for DeAndre to make. But overall, the offense was still a little bit discombobulated, especially later on when the Chargers were able to seal things up and kind of had a better feel for how the Cardinals were going to attack them in the running game. It's not surprising that James Conner was able to get loose, but he did look healthy as well and seemed to be banging around and really throwing his weight around when he had the ball. The touchdown reception was especially impressive, him banging around and getting in there. And it did seem like earlier on that the Cardinals had an easier time running the ball than they would later especially when it came to just the schematics of what how they were going to attack the Chargers that they kind of got wise to a little bit later on. And as I said earlier, they had to work Kyler Murray into that a little bit more than they usually would as well. Not that he doesn't run, but they usually don't design as many runs as they had at this point, which kind of led me to think that they were all in to try to win this game as well they should be to try and save their season. Not that you can't make it at nine and eight, but it's extremely hard. And I don't know that I feel like the Cardinals are going to win all the rest of their games to accomplish that, even though I I think they look stronger than what this game would say when they when they got the loss. It really came down to the offense kind of losing steam in the second half and and the Chargers just being a little bit more aware of the pieces moving around the field you can't really go three and out as many times as the cardinals did to end that game and expect to win the game yeah you could have taken it to ot had the chargers not gone for that two-point conversion but the way the offense had been moving at that point it didn't give me a lot of confidence that even if it did that the cardinals were going to win that game because it had just been so long since they put quality offense out there at that point not to say that they hadn't put themselves in a possible position to win but you can't get so conservative and leave the horse that got you there and try to ride a different one that's a terrible analogy but to my point it seemed like the cardinals kind of let their foot off the gas and a couple of nice kyler runs might have gotten them somewhere but to the chargers credit they were able to corral him and keep him from doing so at that point. And when you force him to be a pocket passer, just strictly, even with DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown out there, it doesn't really lend itself to to a dynamic offense. You need the running portion of it as well to keep everything moving in a dynamic way that the Cardinals really needed it to be moving on this day. You know, despite playing a strong game and having this game go down to the wire it does feel like a microcosm it does feel like it sums up the way this has been going for the cardinals at this point there seems to be elements of the offense that are out of sync and it seems to be kind of incomplete at times when kyler isn't running around and playing the backyard style of football as they like to call it It does seem like the offense kind of shrinks And sometimes the game is going to shrink in that same way and require Kyler to be a pocket passer and do all the things I talk about when it comes to playing an extra sensory style of football. And it doesn't feel like Kyler has developed 
some of those skills. It feels like he still has to rely on the physicality and on his running. And there's not always the ability to run yourself out of every situation. And we're seeing that with some of these quarterbacks that when a team is able to hem them in and build a wall across that front that Kyler or some of these running quarterbacks can't squirt out of and get to open space, then that's the game plan that they get presented with at some point. And some team like the Rams did last year to Kyler have the ability to execute that game plan. And then here we are dealing with an inexplicable loss that, yes, came down to them making a two-point conversion on a play that I used to run in Madden all the time. But still, that's the way the ball bounces. You had every opportunity to ice this game and put this game away and simply put did not have the ability when you seized up and kind of quit playing Kyler as the uh, end-all, beat-all running around and making plays behind the line of scrimmage guy, which is a bummer. I enjoy Kyler. I wanted to see him get another chance to get beyond this impasse that we seem to be at with his passing and with his game because he is such an incredible, unique athlete, and he has a lot of ability when it comes to throwing the ball, but his stature kind of limits him over the middle, and then when you're not really advancing as an expert passer, then your game is always going to be limited in that way. And then once again, when that team seals you into the pocket, are you going to be able to make them pay for that? And right now, the answer for Kyler, the answer for Lamar, and so far the answer for Jalen Hurts is no. And for each team that I just mentioned, it gets harder and harder to make them do that, to make them try and be Tom Brady. And for Jalen, we've only seen it in small spurts with the Tampa Bay game last year, but that can happen to him as well. So it'll be up to one of these guys to break through that ceiling and kind of prove it to us at this point. Not that there can't be a running quarterback that wins the Super Bowl. It's just, is there going to be one team they run into that's able to take their legs away from them? And then ultimately, will they be able to win that game? We haven't seen it from these guys yet. I want to see it and I want to keep giving them chances because they are that athletic and special. And Kyler made a bunch of plays today that, that only a couple people can make, and maybe they can't even make them. So I'm going to keep watching the sign me up for the whole rest of Kyler's contract. I'll keep watching just to see special plays. I just want to see if he can get over the hump. And I think we're all looking for that, especially if you're listening to this, because you're probably a Cardinals fan. So there you go. Well, that's what I've got for this game. It was an exciting one, and I'll, I'll always watch both these guys. They're, they're two of my favorites to watch, and they make the game exciting, so I'm all into that because it can easily get not exciting with them out there. See Colt McCoy-led offense last week in, in Mexico City. Look for more videos coming out on this game and other games. I'm going to be putting short videos out and, as well as hopefully some more long-form ones in addition to these podcasts on the individual games, so look for that. Download the podcast if you haven't done so already. Like, subscribe, all those good things if you're still listening. And have a great rest of your day.